Hello friends and welcome back to another Web Developer Path video. In this one, we are going to learn about the basics of Vue.js using Options API. So with Vue.js, we can use different ways to implement it. And one is Options API, which we will use in this video. And one is Composition API which is a slightly different syntax and we will learn all about it in the next video. Now there is another way which is through the build tools and that is just installing the program using npm and we will cover all about this one in the third video and in that one we will cover features like view router and pinia for state management and script setup and things like that. But for this video and the next one we will use the CDN. Before that Let's have a quick introduction. Vue.js is a JavaScript framework and it gives us a component-based programming model. Now, a component-based programming model gives us the ability to build SPAs or single page applications. A single page application is basically a web application that doesn't call the server every time there is a change. And you can see here, I am changing the content, but there is no page reload because this SPA or this application has already got all the data from the server that needs and now the client is in charge of changing the views or the components. I will talk about this in a second but I want to show you in a traditional website like Wikipedia whenever we click on a link you can see there is a full reload on the page so everything keeps rendering and every time pages change there is a call to the server to bring that change and render it on the page so this is a traditional multi-page application. So back to Vue.js documentation you can see we have this section about components basic and and it can show us in this image how they work basically we have a root component which is our application and then we have components within that so we have a header for example a main which contains two articles and an aside which contains three items so whenever i want to change this main or this item this article i don't have to re-render the whole application i can just change one component at a time. So let's go to the quick start and grab the CDN. I'm going to copy it, add it to my project. I also use Tailwind because I have some Tailwind classes in my markup. All right, so let's just start by creating our app. And every view application starts by creating a new application instance with the create app function. So let's do that. So in our project, as you can see, I have only one HTML file and just my script, nothing else. Right below the H1, which is the bottom of the body, I am going to create a script tag. And within that, I will say const create app, and I'm going to set it to view. So that is our app. Now, the create app method from view takes an object as its argument. And this object, in fact, is a component. Let's go back to that component section on view documentation. And if we scroll down a bit, you can see a view component is a file with view extension. Now, we cannot use this because this requires a build tool, like, again, installing the whole application. Now, with a view file, we can actually have very organized and clean code, and we will use this in the third video. However, now, because we are using the CDN, we can just use a normal JavaScript object. And again, this is a component, and each component contains different options. So each property is called an option in here. So we have data, we have template, we have methods, computed, props, and so many others. Okay, back to creating our app. So like in the documentation, let's create our first option and that would be the data property this one takes a function as its value and this function returns an object okay so this might be a bit confusing at first but let's recap create app method takes an object as its argument which is actually our root component so this is our root component and within that, we have options. Now, data is one of those options. This data option takes a function as its value, and this function returns an object. And within this object, we can create whatever data we want to work with. So let's say I want to have a title and set it to hello world, just like that. Now, at this point, there is no communication between the DOM and the view application. So we need to actually mount this with the mount method to the DOM. And this will take a CSS selector or an HTML element selector. So we can use the 
HTML tags like body, which is not recommended. We can use classes, we can use IDs. So the best way is to use IDs because we know they are unique. So I'm going to create a div here with the ID of app and everything within this app now is view is our view application. So if I save this one, uh, because the code, right now we are hard coding this text, we don't see anything, but we can pass this title into this h1 instead of that hard-coded text and we can do so by using double curly brackets or mustache syntax so i can just address the key which is title in here and there we go so now because our application is mounted and it is created we can go to that view extension right there and we can see our root component is this application so it's this div and then the data that is being passed into it. So we can see what data we have in our application. Sometimes this view thing doesn't show up. So you just have to close the whole thing and open it and refresh the page and it will pop up. Okay, so we already covered creating an application and we already rendered something on the page. But again, remember our application is only this div. So anything goes outside, you can see here, it doesn't make any sense for view. This is outside of that wrapper and it is outside of our root component so it would not do anything and if I don't provide these special syntax that I'm just passing the text title so that wouldn't work either all right let's jump to the next section which is template syntax and working with view directives so before we do that let's take a look at this image at the bottom of this template syntax and in Vue.js we have these things called directives that start with v dash. Now there are several directives which we will cover most of them and basically they start with v dash and then some text, some identifier. In this case we have on which means it is an event listener. So v on for example lessens for an event and this v on can be omitted for example you can see here it can be omitted if there is a shorthand and again we will cover all of this. Then we have a colon of course and then we have our argument. In this case we are listening for a submit. It could be for example something else. We can listen for a click, we can listen for input for anything that we can listen to using JavaScript. And then we have some modifiers. Sometimes we have, sometimes we don't have modifiers. And we can denote them by using a dot right after the argument. And then as its value, we can pass JavaScript expressions. So let's see this in action. So we are going to cover some of the view directives and we will start with vText. Now vText is the simplest one and it sets the text content of an element to whatever we pass into it. We can just say hi. So this is again a normal text wrapped in, in single quotations because this vText in fact expects a data, a dynamic data rather than just a text. So if I say hi, we get hi. And if we go to the console, you can see you can see vText will override whatever we put in here. So this text. Now, of course, I don't want this hi. I just want to render that title again and I can delete this one and we will get the same thing. There we go. And you notice we are not using the mustache syntax here. So when we are using directives, don't use the mustache syntax because this already expects a dynamic data. We know we are not passing a text. All right, so that's vText. Similar to vText, we have vHTML. And I think that's clear. It sets the inner HTML of an element. So right now we have an H1, of course, but if I wrap this one, with a p tag. When we inspect the element, we have a p tag here. Of course, we don't see it on the screen because it's a, it's inner HTML and it's being translated to plain text. Okay, so the next one is vBind, which is very useful. So I'm gonna put this back the way it was so we can talk about other directives. So vBind is a very useful directive that can bind some data from the application to an attribute of an HTML element. So in this case, for example, I want to bind the class attribute to something that I will pass into it. Now I can, for example, declare my custom class down here and set it to some uh, blue text using Tailwind CSS. And now I want to use this. I, I can just pass this property into this vbind 
as its argument and if I save it the text is blue and if, if we inspect the element you can see the classes are merged so the one that I hard coded and the one that is dynamic are merged together. Now vbind is so often used that there is a shorthand for it and that is just a colon. So this is the same thing as saying vbind and we will use this one from now on. And also we can actually pass expressions into this. We don't have to just say one thing. We don't have to pass a property. We can actually use JavaScript expressions. So if I say, for example, I want to bind my class to a ternary operator. So if the condition is true, I want to pass something in here. If it is false, something else. So I want to say, if my condition is true, which is set the text to yellow, and therefore we get yellow, and we don't need this anymore. However, if it is false, the text should be green. There we go. So I just wanted to show you that you can actually pass expressions into this attribute binding. Now let's talk about the next one, which is V on. So I'm going to have a button for this one because V on lessens for an event. In this case, I want to lessen for a click. So this is JavaScript uh, listeners, right? And what do we want to do when we click on this button? Let's have a text in here first and set it to add or just say number is so this is a typical example from view documentation too so we have a number here and if i save it we get number zero but i want that zero to be dynamic so i'm going to create a property here and set it to zero now instead of hard coding that zero i will use that count variable or property whatever we want to call it and we will get still the same thing but now that is dynamic what i want to do now just want to pass a JavaScript expression here and say add one to the count every time I click on it. So let's do this and as I save it and I click on it you can see it's working. So there are a few things I want to explain here. First v on just like the v bind is so common that there is a shorthand and that is an at sign. So at click or whatever listener we passed in here is the same as saying v on colon something. Now, right here, we are passing a JavaScript expression. So there's nothing fancy here. And again, because this already knows this is a dynamic data, we don't need any special syntax. We can just pass it here in between of the quotations. Now, every time I click on this button, the number is being changed. Let's go to view dev tools and let's refresh. Let's save the page so we are back to zero, right? Now again, this view dev tool sometimes needs to refresh and you can click on this one, it will refresh everything for you. So, but what? watch what happens to this count as I click on this one. You can see that also goes up and therefore on the screen goes up. This is because of something called reactivity. Let's go back to view documentation and in here we have reactivity fundamentals. So this is a bit too technical and you can read all about it here, but basically what it says here, they use JavaScript proxies to make the data reactive. And by reactive, it means it is constantly looking for updates and as if they are alive, as if they are so flexible that they can change at any time. And that is basically the reactivity side and allowing us to change things on the fly without even calling the server and that's a big deal especially uh, we will see this keyword when we get to the composition API because then we have to use the reactive method now anything we pass into this data is reactive and I can change it here you can see seven and up there is changing again because it's reactive it's all connected okay let's go back to the directives and I'm gonna delete this button and this count and this v bind and keep it as it is I'm gonna delete that one too so we have another directive called v if and similar to that we have v show now v if and v show both take a true c argument or value so they will show or hide an element based on the truthiness of an expression. So if I just pass true in here to both of them, now this again could come in from our data that we are computing something, we are adding, we are calculating something and then pass it into. We will see a real example when we built our application. So 
if I save it and go to the console, uh, I'm sorry, I forgot to pass some text here. So I want to say V show in here. So just the text so we know which one we are working with and the VF. So in the elements, if we inspect them, we have two edge fonts. That's exactly what we want because we are setting both of them to true. But if I set both of them to false now, see what happens. So in our div, we have a one edge one that sets the display to none. And then we have a comment for VF. Basically, we show hides and shows an element based on the display. So using CSS shows and hides an element, but we if destroys an element completely and re-render it if we set it to true. So in terms of performance, this is more costly than we show. But the rule of thumb is that if you have something that can that needs to toggle on and off, like a menu or something, use V show. Otherwise use V if. And so that is V show and we if, but we're not done with we if, we can actually chain else statements to this one, just like JavaScript. So if I copy this one down and change the text to else, we can chain v else. Now v else doesn't take any value. So it's just an v else because if this is true, then we get v if, just like we see on the screen. If this is false, we get the v else, whatever it's in here. So this has to be chained. Okay, so I cannot have anything in the middle. Also, I cannot have only an else. It has to be a chain. And just like JavaScript, we can also have the else if. So just like that. And again, it has to be a chain. I want to change the text to the else if. And because right now both of them are false, we are falling into the else block. But if I change this one to true, the V if is false, then we fall into the else if, so we are getting that one. And if we change this back to true, none of these two will render because now our V if is true. So it doesn't even evaluate these two. So that is V if, else, and else if. The next directive is V4, and that's a for loop, which means I am going to create a new property here and sets it to an array of numbers. So just random numbers like that. It okay, doesn't matter. We just want to test that v4. And v4, the view directive again, is just like for in loop in JavaScript. So we can say v4 equal to, now the expression is going to be for each number or num in, just like JavaScript, in our nums array. So what do we want to do? We just want to show that num as a text here. So we can use the mustache syntax again because this is the text. So there's no dynamic data unless we say so with the mustache syntax. So I just want to show that num. And if I save it, of course, we get the numbers as h1s. So on whichever element we provide this v4, that element and all its children will be repeated. And again, we will see an example later on. That is most of the directives which we covered in this one. There is another one that is very useful, but, and that is vModel. And vModel works with form inputs, but we will see that in our example, which we will create in a moment. Let's do a bit of cleanup so we can start with our real example. So I'm gonna push this down a bit and I'm going to delete all these properties here. I'm going to delete this H1. And the first thing I want to do to create an external file for my JavaScript. So let's call it app.js. And all we want to do, just cut everything in here and paste it here, format it, save it. And back in here, under script element, I'm just going to use the source attribute and bring that app.js in here. So right now, if I save it, you can see we have nothing and this gives us a warning that says component missing. Okay, that's sure because I don't have anything. So I wanna paste some HTML here and I will explain it in a second. Okay, so I have a form here. This code, by the way, will be available on GitHub. I have a form here, nothing JavaScript and nothing view, it's just HTML and CSS. And there are two input fields, one for username, one for email. And then I have a membership status, which is a radio button, and the user can select one of them as their membership status. This is just a silly example, but uh, and we are not storing the data anywhere. But right now, it doesn't work properly because 
it is not set up correctly. Basically what we want to do, get the data out of these user inputs and these radio buttons and show it down here to the user. So that means we need two properties or two values for username and email at first. So let's create that in our app. So in the data option, I'm going to create a username and set it to something for now, but we will set it to an empty string later. And then one for email and I will set it to an just a fake email, of course. So let's show this in the DOM first, and we already know how to do this. Let's use this username title as our playground. So I want to say username here, and there we go. We get that value from our username data option. So now if I want to have the same value in my input field, I can set the value of it right to that username. Now, this is this is wrong because of course I'm just setting the username text to the value and that's why we are saying username. We want to bind this to the property we have in our app. And as you remember, we can use vbind like that or we can just use the shorthand. So this would work. Also the shorthand that would also work. So vbind. Right now we are binding the value of our username in our application to this value of the input field. But if I change this one, of course, nothing's happening. Basically, this bind is a one-way street, and it is from our application to the DOM. What we want is from the DOM back to the application. So we want a two-way street. So one way to do it is to use the JavaScript. So we can lessen with the directive we on. Remember, we on lessens for an event. So we want to lessen for the input and set the expression to a JavaScript callback function. So we want to grab the event and set the username, our username, to the event target, which is our input field, and the value of it. Okay, so the value of our target, which is our input field. Again, v on, remember, there's a shorthand, we can use at input. So right now we are setting the value to the username. Also, we are lessening if the input changes, if the input field changes, set the username to that value, whatever that is. So we are kind of changing the username as we are typing into the input field. Let's see how it works. And of course, I'm getting that up there because I'm outputting the username up here because it is reactive. Again, if we go to view, Dev tools and refresh this one. Okay, you can see this is not working. So I have to refresh the whole page, I guess. Okay, now it's working. I had to close the whole thing and open it again. It was kind of annoying. So I don't usually use View Dev Tools, even though it's quite helpful. But because the extension, for some reason, it's not working properly. Anyway, so you can see I have my username. As I changed it, it changes down here too, up there too. So anywhere that there is a reference to username, this keeps changing. So this is because of that reactivity and this is awesome. Now, this is good and all, but there is actually a shorthand for these two lines. So these two directives, we can just use V model and this V model is a two way street and we want to bind the username. So this is exactly the same as saying bind the username and lesson for the input. So now if I type in here, you can see everything works as it was working before. So let me change this back to the title because we know it's working. We don't need to test it anymore. Now we want to do the same for email. So I'm just going to copy that one and add it here, change this to email. So we know we are getting our email and username and you can see down here is changing. Okay, let's create a section down here and I just added a title up there. So I'm gonna copy this up here and right under the form, so this div, which is the container for the form, I'm going to paste it here and let's make some comments so it's clear to see. So this would be users list eventually. And I need to close that div and this would be users list. Now for now, I'm just going to add that username and email. Okay, so we can see it down here. Now let's tackle this membership status thing. So we know this is a radio button. This is just another input, but we want to get the value of this one. Let's create a property for it and let's call it membership. And by default, I will set it to guest. So it has to be a guest by default. So let's output it in our DOM. So down here, just under the email, I'm going to change this to membership. And of course we get guest down here. Now keep in mind, because we need the value, that's why it's important that we use the exact same value 
in our properties and that's why we have a guest with the capital G now we want to bind this membership just like these inputs we want to bind it to our input fields we can use V model and these radio buttons too if we have one here that is for our guest so we can say V model is membership that's it and we have to repeat this so I'm going to copy it for all these radio buttons and this has to be the same because they are radio and radio buttons can be selected one at a time right so if I formatted the code you can see I have V model on these three radio buttons and they are all the same okay so now it works as intended and watch down here as I change again because it's reactive okay that's great because we already showing the data down here the problem is I cannot add another one and press this button and save it to a database for example or local storage or things like that so this is at least we can show the data down here as the user changing changes the values of this form now this is not what we want what we want to do to submit this to somewhere so we want to submit it to an array we want to save this data in an array and then show it down here to the user so let's first disable this button so in a real application usually you disable the button until the form is ready for submission and we can do that just by tweaking the button down here so we have our form button down here and we know that buttons have an attribute disabled right so if I save this one we get a gray color and the mouse cursor is not allowed because of the CSS classes that I applied it now this has to be dynamic we don't want to do this because this would be disabled all the time. So we can bind this. And remember we said we can use vbind for any attribute, for almost anything, and then bind it to something. Now, again, I'm gonna use the shorthand. So just like the CSS classes that we applied conditionally, here we can do the same thing. We can apply based on the condition. And I wanna say if these two input fields are empty, then this should be disabled. I don't need to check for this one because I know this would by default have a guest. So let's clear these two because initially email and username should be empty, just like that. Okay, so right now we have only a guest down there. So I want to say if username equals to an empty string or, so two pipes, email equals to an empty string. So this we know this evaluates to false. It's a truthy statement. It will evaluate to false if both of them are empty it will evaluate to true if both of them are not empty. So let's save it and the button is disabled. Now, as soon as I start typing in the email, you can see, there we go, it's working. Now, again, this is a simple check, but we need to check this is actually an email or not. Right now I'm using the email type on the input. So if I click submit, I'm getting this error, which is just part of the browser. It's not, it's not JavaScript or view. So this is again working and it's quite easy to see because it's a short statement, but uh, you can imagine if these things, these things can get complicated and crowded and it's just difficult to read. This is a good place to introduce another option in our application and that is computed properties. Now, computed properties are basically methods that return something. Think of it as a method that returns always returns something. Now, a computed option takes an object. So it's not like this one that you have to pass a function that would return an object. You can simply just pass an object as its value and we can call this one whatever we want. So I want to check if the form is valid. So I want to call it is form invalid because we are binding it to the disabled and that's why I call it, it just makes more sense. And again, it's just like a function, uh, we want to check for something. And the keyword here is return. They always return something. I want to return this. So I'm going to cut it out of here and paste it here. Now in this one, I cannot just say username because this is a block element. Okay, so username doesn't mean anything to the computed block. So we need to target this element. So, or this object and using this keyword should do the trick. Uh, in our HTML markup, we want to bind the disabled attribute to the computed property is form valid. And down here, you can see in our data, we have a computed, we have in, in our options, we have a computed option now that says is form valid. Okay, sorry, I called it invalid. Is form invalid? And there we go. It's true now. It does make sense because is form invalid? Yes, it is invalid. So if we add something to it and it becomes false immediately, you can see here. So again, computed properties 
are a very good way to return something based on the computation, based on the calculation, and use that data in our HTML or component. Okay, let's move on. We already handled this one. Now let's handle the form submission. So on the form itself, we have to add a listener. So here it is. So we want to listen for a submit event. And whenever we submit something, we would probably add all of this to an array. So we want to listen to a submit event. So we can use von or shorthand again, at sign. This one is a submit. And remember, we could use modifiers to prevent the default button. Let's not do it at first. And let's just call a method add user, which we don't have it, but we will create it in a moment. So if I save this one and add something here and click submit, you can see I had a page refresh up there. Let's do it again. So look up here. If I click submit, there is a full page reload. And that is because Again, we are not preventing the default and this is the default behavior of a submission, form submission. So we can just say dot prevent, which is the same to say event dot prevent default in JavaScript. Now, if I do this and add something here and submit, nothing happens because there is no method called add user. So let's add this one in our application. So again, we can introduce another option and that is methods. Methods, just like computed, takes an object. And I think this is quite clear. We can write all the methods we need in this object. So we call that one add user. And let's just for now, console.log, okay. All right, so we wanna see if it works. So let's go to the console here and add something to the form and submit and we get okay, great, fantastic. But we don't wanna do that. We want to actually get the data and we already, I think it's, quite easy and clear how to get the data. We can just get these down here. So just as an example, let's get the username, only the username, we don't want anything else. So if I pass here something meaningful, my name and some nonsense email and premium here, it doesn't matter, but you can see it's working here. Now, if I click submit, we are getting that username. By the way, I think it's a good idea we will clear the form and set it to default after submission. So right here. So, okay, we know we are getting the data we want. All we have to do now to add it to somewhere. Now, in a real application, you send it to database, you will probably save it somewhere. Now here, we don't have any database or any local storage. We don't wanna use local storage. We can just create a user's array in our data options and add to that, so push to that user's array. And by the way, this is not ideal. I will refactor this in a second. So we want to grab that user's array whenever we click on the form submission button and push the data into that array as an object. So we want an object for each user and each user would have a username that would be equal to this username. So the username that we are getting from the form which is linked to this value using vModel. We want the same thing for email and same thing for membership, that's it. Now again, I wanna refactor this one because this is not ideal. In the real world application, we will not have data like this because these are all related to one instant of a user. Imagine we have a user class. So this would be an object. So I can just say, I'm gonna cut this for now, say user as a singular one, and set it to an object and paste those values. So now it makes much more sense. User username, user email, user membership, right? But now I have to add this user before all of these instances of username and email and so on, just like that. So we have to do the same in our markup. So I'm gonna do this pretty quickly, copy this one, save it, go to HTML. We have one V model here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And there we go. Everything should work the same. Now it does. All right, back in our app, we are pushing the data to that array up here. That's quite nice. Let's clear the form after the form submission and also log this user's array. So we can reset the form by setting our properties to their initial values. So our user username was an empty string and so, as, so was email and the initial value for membership was guest. Okay, so this would reset our form. So if I add something here and submit, I didn't save it. So I'm gonna do it again. There we go. And it will reset the form. Now let's console.log that array here. So 
this dot users and we will see something cool here so i'm going to add a real user here for example okay premium let's see what we get if we submit this form submit and there we go so this is a good example of that reactivity we talked about it and we said Vue.js uses javascript proxies to make data reactive and therefore when we log our users array which is in our data options we are getting a proxy instead of just a normal array and that's why all the data within this view application is reactive because they are using uh, javascript proxies but also you can see we are getting our array with all the values we passed into the form so we get the username email and the membership premium okay so our form works properly all we have to do now is show the users list down here instead of just actually showing as the user types because we can't really add anything here we are constantly changing it right so we need to actually loop over that users array and show it down here Let's do it. For that, I'm going to paste another HTML markup and that is going to be just a table. Okay, so as you can see, I have only a table with HTML, CSS, nothing again, JavaScript or Vue.js. But basically what we want to do, we want to show, loop over that array users and show the users in this table. So you can see I have a table header, which is this username, email membership, and then a table row for all the users and this is a good place to repeat because we want to repeat a row for each user so on the table row itself we can say v4 remember we can use four in loops using v4 directives so we want to say for each user in users array and what do we want to show we want to show user that username users email and users membership and if i save it we get nothing because the the array at the moment is empty so let's add something here and there we go we have our user added to the list so i can add another one now this one is going to be vip and there we go you can see this was quite easy right okay so one note about v4 about for loops uh, vue.js always recommends to provide a key to avoid any conflict to avoid any unintended behavior and we can do so by binding the key to something unique that we know it will never repeat it has to be something unique so in this case we know for example username is going to be unique we know email maybe email is unique so but to make sure we are sending something 100 percent unique we can grab the index of this user's array and use it as a key for here so instead of just expecting the user i can wrap this in parentheses and say bring me the user and the index please so this is javascript again there's nothing special here it's a foreign loop that i say for example give me the value of each iteration as well as their index so i can use the index here as the key so if i just instead of this membership let's show that uh, index sorry not the key index here and if i add a user you can see it's zero and then of course the next one will be one there we go so vue.js always recommends to to include the key attribute and bind it to something unique to avoid conflicts i am going to put this back to membership now we are just tweaking things around to make things cleaner and also practicing the things we've learned in the beginning of the video so you see this user list even though it's empty we are still seeing it it would be a good idea to show a message for example that if the user doesn't exist uh, we say for example please add a user something like that and that calls for a v if right now we don't want to see the table at all so we can provide the v if on the table itself we can say v if now we need to check for something on what condition we want to show the table we want to show it if there is any member in the array users so i can say users that length and that's it because this will return true if there is anything in the array otherwise it would return false so if i save it now the whole table is gone and and by gone i mean literally gone because they are it's being destroyed you can see here v if so under the users list there's nothing and if i come here and add a user there we go and you can see the table was added to the dom now 
this is a good use of we if because we know the table always be there as long there is a user so even if it's just one let's see what if there isn't any right now we're not saying anything so we need to chain our else right under the table i can just provide maybe another h1 i'm just going to copy this h1 here say please please add a user and make it a smaller it's too big so again it is showing that one but if i add a user that doesn't go away right because i didn't say the if the else sorry so if i say the else on this one there we go so we are seeing this one but if i add a user that would go away and we see the table so again in this users list we can see the example of a v if v else v for key binding and that's it all right so everything works great except one thing right now all the membership status we can see here the text is green for all of them by default i want to change the text based on their status so again it's a good place for the conditional class here so on this membership table data i'm going to add a class and use the vbind the shorthand for it now in here i'm going to show you another way you can apply custom classes conditionally so we can pass an object into the value of the class which is bound to our application right which we are using vbind on it and i'm going to use an object and the value and the key for that object is going to be the css class we want to apply so i'm going to say text purple 500 if so the value for this key is going to to be that condition if user membership is premium okay so the text should be purple if user membership is premium let's see if it works and i'm going to set premium here and there we go it is purple by default is green now i'm going to have to do the same for the vip but i cannot just pass another object next to it okay so i can wrap it in an array and then add a comma and just copy this one and say if it is vip then set it to orange let me clean this up a bit so we have an array with two objects that are actually conditional classes so let's see if it works i'm going to add three users here so the first one is guest therefore it's green the second one is premium it's purple and the third one is going to be vip which is orange there we go so just wanted to show you there is another way to add custom classes or conditional classes okay so this is working too and we've already covered most of these essential things so we already covered event handling list rendering conditional rendering and classes and style binding we did all of these things there are a few things left here that i want to cover so we already did form input too now i want to talk about the lifecycle hooks and watchers at the end but before that let's talk about components uh, so a big part of Vue.js is the components and again components help us to have a very clean easy and dynamic code so and reusable code of course so in our project you can see we have two sections and these can be their own components so we don't have to include everything in one file which is very difficult to maintain so i'm going to create two files here so the first one would be user create .js and then another one for user list .js and let's just start with the list because it's easier so back in the html i'm going to grab this div all the way down here and i'm going to cut it and i cannot just add it to your user list just like this because this is a js file right so i can say export default an object and then use the template option and use the backticks because it's going to be the dynamic it's going to be dynamic markup so that's why we use backticks okay so if i reformat it we get this markup in our users list javascript and again in the documentation view tells us how we can create components if we don't have a build tool to use view view extension so in a js extension file we can have options just like any other component so this whole thing is a component and our template is also included in here now we need to actually tell our root application that we have a component we need to expose that component to our root component so we can do so by first importing it into our app.js file so i can say import users list from users list.js so 
me add that one. So this one immediately will give me an error because this is not a module and I will fix that in a second. But since we are still here, we have another option that can be added to the create app component. So our root component, we can declare our components using components options. And this is an object again, it takes an object and we can pass the name of our components in here. Now, because in the console, we, are, we see the error that says use import statement outside of a module. So on this script tag in index.html, we can just specify the type of module. Now, everything is fine. Now, in order to have that user's list, user list, sorry, in order to have this component in our root element markup or template, we can use it just like an HTML tag. So we can say user, dash list and I can close it like this and you notice I'm getting an error that says we are trying to read the property of undefined length because we are trying to read this user that doesn't exist on this component and we will fix that in a second but I just want to clarify this one that when we use our components name in our HTML we need to use it like this so as a kebab case I think that's what they call it but basically we have a dash in between of each every word even though our component here is a camel case component just keep that in mind when we use it in our HTML template we need to use this kind of a convention so let's address this one this is looking for that users array now the users array it's actually on our root component on the application itself which the child the user list, which is the child of our root component, doesn't have access. So again, if we look at this image, you can see if we have something in our child component, we need to get it from the parent. So the parent need to send something to the child. And that is done through another option, which is called props, and it is defined on the child element. So this child element can expect props to handle the problem of not having access to the parent's data. And in this case, we need a user's array. This is one way. So we provide our props option and we pass an array with all the things we need. In this case, we just need a user's. Now on our HTML, we can use that prop name just like an HTML attribute and say, the user's is going to be the user's array in our HTML. Now, this is, I'm just passing the text. So remember, we need to bind that user's prop to the user's array in the application. And I can use the shorthand. So if I save it, everything goes away. Every error goes away and things work out the same. So if I add the user here, there we go. So again, to recap, a child component can get data from the parent using props. Or in other words, a parent can communicate with its child through props. And we pass in props by using the props option. Now, one thing here I should mention, this is not a good way. I do not use an array for props. The best practice is to use an object and then tell in that object, specify what kind of a data you expect. So we need a user's prop that is going to be an array. So it will not change anything, but now it's clearer that the user's property here is actually an array. That's it, and I can close out my user list because now it's working. So you can see that our HTML markup is much, much cleaner now. It's just one tag that has one attribute. So if I wanna know what is this user list, I can just go to the app component and see, okay, yeah, I have a user list that is coming from this JS file and I can see what's going on there. Let's do the same thing for our create user. So in our create user JS file, I'm going to say export default again, and we will expect the template at first, and let's cut the whole form, which is this div right after the app. So I'm going to cut this whole thing and add it here. And this will break everything if I save it. There we go. I'm going to create a comment here. Okay, so user create should go under this comment. So we already know this is our template. And the first thing we need to do, we actually import this one into our app or root element. So again, I can say import user create from user create.js. And in my components object, I can declare that one as my component user create. That gives me the ability to use it in my HTML. 
so I can say user dash create and I can close that tag just like that just an HTML tag okay again we are getting a bunch of errors because there are so many things we haven't handled let's talk about this basically a component is in charge of doing everything that is related to that component so the markup the logic the CSS classes and everything goes within one component and again this would be a lot easier when we get to a build tools because we would have a clear script we would have a clear template and styles and so on but because we are using JS format or using CDN we need to use it through template options and adding our classes by some other means. So our user create component needs some data because it's the form. So in our app, you can see we are handling all the data here. We have all the logic for the user create here, which is not necessary because now it doesn't exist on the root component. It has its own component. So we can actually move all of this into our user create. What I'm gonna do now, I'm going to copy all of this so from data, computed, and methods. I'm going to copy it and add it right above the template, just like that, and reformat it and save it. So you can see it's, it's working and those errors are gone. Now, let's fix things around here. First of all, we don't need this user's array because that belongs to the root component because our user list is actually dependent on that one. And back in app.js, we can delete this user object from our data we can delete the computed, we can delete the methods too, and I will add the method later again because we would use it. Okay, so right now if I do something here, again, it would not work because there is no array in this component. Let's see what's happening here. In our user create component, we have the data. That means uh, this component that has the form is handling the user form submission. We have our user instance that is bound to the form. We also checking if the form is invalid or not. So that makes sense. It's in the same component. And then we are pushing it to an array which doesn't exist. Okay, so that is the problem right there. So we are pushing the data to an array that it doesn't exist on this component. So we need to have a way to communicate with the parent and say, hey, I have some data I want to give you. So remember, in the user's list, we communicated from the parent down to the child, if you will. Okay, so it was a downward. If we look at this image again, it was a downward flow. Right now, we want to communicate backwards. We want to, the child needs to communicate to the parent. And for that, Vue has another built-in feature, and that's called emit. I'm just going to make a comment here and it is an emit event and I am and I'm using event because then we need to listen for this event okay so instead of pushing data we are going to emit our data we are going to send it back to the to the root component so the root component the parent can use it so we don't need to do any of this we can say this dot emit with the dollar sign just like that. So this is a special view feature and this dollar sign signifies that this emit is a built-in feature in Vue.js. So this, which is the component, we want to emit something. What do we want to emit here? Now emit is a method that takes one or two arguments. The first one is the name of the event we want to send out. We can call it whatever we want. In this case, I want to call it add. Okay, so it's going to add a user. So I'm going to call it add. So Again, this is the name of our custom event listener. Look at it this way. This is our custom event listener, okay? And alongside with this event, I'm going to send this user object, okay? So I can say this.user, that's it. I'm going to send the whole object. And again, we know this user is reactive. So every time there is a change through the form, it would be applied to this user which goes up to the parent. And this add user method is already tied to the form. So whenever the user inputs something and click the submit, this emit method fires up and creates an add event listener and sends it up to the parent alongside with the data that is stored in this user object. So let's save this one and go back to our index.html. Now our user create element can listen 
for that custom event listener which we emitted from the the child user create and we can do so by just saying at add and remember this is the shorthand for v on and this is the name of our custom emitted event so add so what do we want to do here we want to do our own function so we can call it whatever we want we can say i want to add user again for example user add or whatever so i'm just going to call it add and this is the method that is going to happen with that data so let me reformat it save it go back to the app because right now we are now we are on the root element so we can handle this add method in our root so again i can add the methods option right under the data and define my add method here and at first i'm just going to console.log something so we remember that we passed on a user we passed on an object alongside with our emitted custom event and in here i can expect that as a parameter and then just log it here down here so we know what we are getting from the user from that form okay so let's save it and let's bring up the console and just add something here so there we go premium submit and you can see we are getting that proxy object again which is javascript proxies but we are getting the data username email and membership all right so i noticed my user list was not rendering and because i use the self-closing tag for user create and sometimes it happens and i believe it's because we are not using the build tools and it's just uh it cannot properly render everything but uh if i close it like this so using two tags this would work fine and anyway let's add another user so we know it's working again we are getting that proxy with the username email and membership so we know it's working now in the app.js which is again our root component instead of console.log we can just push this user into the users array so i can say this that users that push and we are going to push an object so this time the users info is coming from this parameter so from the child and so i can say user that username and do the same thing for email and membership okay just like that let's add a few users see if everything works properly there we go and let's have a vip user for example and it works as intended but you can see now our application is much much cleaner and we have our root component which contains two child components and one is the create user which is in charge of creating the user through the form and therefore we have all the logic in that one component and then we have one for listing the users and it just makes sense now we can go further and extract these inputs into their own component so it would be reusable but for this video which is which we are trying to keep it simple i'm gonna leave it as it is so i opened our application in a full size page so we can explore this view dev tools you can see we have our root component now it's easier to see let me zoom out a bit and you can see we have two components one is user create that has all the data for creating a user and then we have a user's list and that would expect an array as its props you can see we have event listeners you can see this one is recognizing our add event as an event listener and then we have an attribute that is on add basically that's kind of like wrapped up into this emit function but we are sending the data user which is reactive and computed and we have of course our array which is on our root component okay let's go back to view documentation again and uh, i want to talk about this life cycle hooks before we go to the watchers which is the last one so watchers would be the last one and life cycle hooks are actually it's more like a theory than coding and there is a graph nice graph here we can talk about it uh, basically every view application has a life cycle okay just like many other programming languages and there are events happening on each stage of this life cycle so for example when we start our application we ignore this one because this is for a composition api we talk about it in the next video but we have a create before create method so we something happens here and then it goes on and initialize the options api and then we have a created hook in the in the options api so we can call these hooks 
let me close these extra ones so we can call these hooks just like options so you can say create it and just like data this is expecting a function so we can for example fetch some data that are coming from external servers in this created hook so i can for example here say fetch the data from somewhere and then I would know it's ready so I can save it into my data and then show it using methods or compute it and so on. And then we go down into the lifecycle hook and we have other hooks like before mount. So this is happening before our component is mounted. So created happens first and then before mount happens and then mounted happens, which is this one. So when it's mounted, what do we want to do? For example, we want to initialize something we want to show something to the user and then again we also have some methods or hooks that can happen before unmount and when it is unmounted so the reason i said this is more like a theory because if i come out here and just add some comment and let's say I want to have the mounted hook too. And if I save it in the console, you can see we are getting those two and it doesn't really tell us which one is happening first. So we need to create a whole application specifically for this one to explain what's going on. But you learn more about these hooks and how to use them as you work more with Vue.js in real life applications. And we don't use all of them that often either. So the common ones are created, mounted, and unmounted or before mounted so for example created hook is commonly used for fetching data from external apis because you want to make sure it is already there before you compile your templates or your dom nodes so if you have a model for example on the page you want to perform some actions when it's mounted and then when it is unmounted from the page. So as our last topic, let's talk about the watchers. And watchers are pretty much like computed properties, but they react to the state change. So computed properties, as we talked about it, they return some values, right, for us based on the computation or calculation or whatever. However, uh, watchers react to the state change. And let's have an example for this one so we can easily see what's going on with watchers. Okay, so let's create another external component and I'm just gonna call it the watcher, the watcher, whatever. And I'm going to say export default here. And for the template, I'm going to paste it from an external file. Okay, so this is the markup, which is basically just a div, uh, just an input field for the password. Let's add it to our root component so we can import the watcher from watcher.js and then add it here. And in our HTML, I'm going to close this user's list just like that. So it would not cause a problem again. And then I'm going to add the, the watcher here. All right, so you can see there's no JS or VO in this markup. We already know how to add our template into our components, which is an external component, and I called it the watcher. We imported it in our root element, just like that. And then in our index.html, we referenced that one as our as our custom HTML element, and we are seeing it on the screen. Now, the plan here is, to check what user is typing in here and check this password must contain at least one number and one symbol, okay? So this is a common use of watchers in a single page application. So back to our watcher component, we need to have our data options. And for this one, we need to have a password. So just like a input username and email we need to have a password property and also another property to check if the password is valid is password valid and by default we are going to set it to false so pretty much like this is form valid now in a real world application this will all be in the same form but i just wanted to make this specific for the watchers okay so we can use v model on the input and use password here i also want to use css classes so custom css classes based on this is password valid okay so based on true or falsy state of this property right here so i can bind the class and say if the password is true then set the outline of our 
password input field to green otherwise set it to red so when we are focusing it's false so it's red so if I change this to true it's gonna be green so of course we want to change that dynamically now to use watchers we have another options and that is watch so the watch option takes an object in which we can pass the watcher now in here we need to say what do we want to watch we can say I want to watch the password so this is the same as whatever property we have up here we want to watch and we define it like a function and it takes two parameters one is the new value so whatever is happening here is the newer and one is the old one so sometimes we don't need to do anything with the old one or the new one it just has to it just expects two parameter okay so again this name has to be the same as this argument now what are we going to do here is to check if the password contains a symbol and a number then it is true otherwise it's false and for that I'm gonna use rejects expression which I hate so I'm gonna copy it from an external source okay so this is the rejects or regular expression which I really hate honestly but we just want to test so we want to uh, chain the test function this is JavaScript and test the password I'm sorry the new pass so we want to test this new pass because this will change as we type into the password which is this one so we want to test if the new pass contains at least one number and at least one symbol and it is at least four characters so this right here checks that is at least four characters so if this is true we want to set is password valid to the evaluation of this so I can just say here this dot is password valid equals to whatever the outcome of this expression is so let's save it and we don't need to do anything with the old pass okay so let's see what happens so right now again we are watching this password so I'm going to type something one two three four characters but it is still red because I have no number or a symbol so if I say a number hmm, still not working add a symbol it works so it's fine now so let's do it again I want to add a number not working because it's only one character a symbol not working and something else it works so more than four characters basically this is how a watcher works it keeps watching this password field this password property and it performs some actions based on that state change so again unlike computed properties where they take some data they compute it and they return something these watchers they are constantly watching and they are constantly ready to take action so with watchers this event is triggering based on the state change and that's about it guys so we covered all the essentials except this template ref which is not a big deal by the way I can talk about we can talk about that next time but we covered most of the essentials of Vue.js through options API so in the next video again we will do the same thing but we will use composition API and we you can choose whichever works best for you because both of them are still in good hands they are working just fine and with that i'm going to end this video guys i hope you enjoyed it and i hope this has been helpful and i want to thank you all for your like subscribe and support thanks for watching see you at the next one Bye bye